I'd like to uh, give Nicole a chance to talk a little bit more if you're if you'd like about other ways you use AI images in your work. So as a reminder, Nicole runs an agency that specializes in AI powered marketing services, and she's been doing it for seven years. So she has seen the kind of evolution from the really um, ghastly, you know, digital demons uh, to the more uh, kind of not quite there, but closer uh, of, of the AI tools now. And she's gonna share just a little bit about how she um, uh, is using this with her, her blog and in other areas of her business. Well, I'm not even gonna take credit for these because most of these Katie did. She's on in the audience right now and she's our resident artist from this perspective. Um, and we started out doing these images. <laughs> well, this one's kind of funny. We didn't ask it to correct, but she has, you know, three eyes on here. And we started doing videos with AI voices. And we've been experimenting with different tools to do video because then we can take our content, we do an introduction and post it to YouTube of what people are gonna get in our blog posts. And we are doing an experiment in our blog right now where we have a bunch of posts that we did not edit and we wanted to see what pure AI at outputs would be. And we're working on creating better inputs to get better outputs, but we also wanna show what unedited outputs look like. We also write our own content, but we really, we wanna show the evolution of AI in our blogs. Um, and this image was mid journey created. I'm sure, um, some more mid journey. Yeah. You know, one thing we haven't talked about is that these image generators don't render text very well. Uh, no, we, they don't. we saw that in the business leader icon at the very beginning, but, um, they cre kind of invent this weird invented language. Um, that doesn't look normal at all. Um, and, and so you'll notice that those letters in that uh, image that you just were showing are not actually all English letters. No, they're not even real letters. Sometimes they're just shapes based on what the shape of a letter would be. Um, and it's not a letter in any language. And you look at the people in here. Her face is kind of smushed into the screen. Um, but look at these people. And that's, you know, AI generated. And Katie has fun with doing the different prompts. I think that's, it's a great image. Yeah, so if you wanna get some inspiration, you can go to the blog and just check out the different types of images that are here. Um, we will be sharing some more prompts. I've actually created a prompt in AI PRM for uh, a little marketing prompt. So AI PRM is a publicly, you can have a public available prompts where you can save them and make them available to other people. And you can get mid journey prompts in there and you can get prompts for any kind of copy you wanna write, even grant writing, things like that. Um, but we're, the thing somebody asked was if you do a prompt, you know, does it always give you the same results? And, um, Jessica, that was, sorry, that was the pro version of Canva. I'm not sure what the free version looks like if you have the apps on it. Um, but the prompts, you might, you may get different answers from week to week because AI is changing so much like the red car. And so you just need to stay curious and keep asking yourself more of what you're looking for and you'll get really good at prompting. It'll also make you better at communicating with your clients and with your team members as you get better at talking to AI and being really clear about what your expectations are and what the outputs are that you want. Yeah, now that's an interesting one, right? Because the, the image of the uh, astronaut that you were just showing, Reminds mm -hmm. me a lot of the image that Olivier uh, used with one of his clients. And I was curious, um, did, did you didn't do that one with Olivier, that one you did independently, right? Yeah, 
Yeah. So, so here's where one of the risks comes in is if you're not creative in your prompting and your competition or other people are doing the same prompts, you're going to get similar looking images. And those similar looking images are kind of like when the, uh, when you're a cybersecurity company and you have the picture of the hacker with a hoodie and it's like every cybersecurity camera has like literally the exact same stock photo that they bought from Shutterstock with that same exact hacker. Like all hackers clearly are men with hoodies, right? Because that's what yeah. every image on every cybersecurity. And if you want to kind of laugh, go Google cybersecurity and just start finding all the places on all the websites where they all use the exact same image. And there's a kind of risk, I would say, for AI content like that, because, you know, uh, you know, Olivier and Nicole, um, who, uh, you know, live uh, almost as far apart as you possibly can, Nicole is in uh, Vancouver, uh, and Olivier is in Switzerland, are using identical images, and they're just hoping their uh, your clients don't notice. But um, that's, that's, the, 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 that's where the AI plus human is always going to be required. Right, because you bring your humanity into this um, in, in a way that no uh, bot uh, ever will be able to uh, until um, we get to a, a kind of scary universe that is what uh, Elon Musk is warning us about.